This podcast is a member of the Place to Be Nation family. Visit us at placetobenation.com. The only place to be in your pop culture world. Songs with. How many of us have them? Songs with. Ones we can depend on. Songs with. How many of us have them? Songs with. Before we go any further. Songs with. Place to be nation. This is episode 16 of Songs with Friends, the super special Christmas spectacular. With apologies to Glenn Butler, because I should have stole that shit from him. Uh, this is Steve Williams. I'm here with Kelly. Kelly, how are you tonight? I'm good. Now, guys, the reason this is a super special Christmas spectacular is that this is the first time I'm actually in the same room with Kelly while, we're, while we were recording this. Kelly, is it weird? Uh, yeah, it's going to be weird. No, I'm just kidding. It's going to be weird as fuck. <laughs> it's going to be super weird. <laughs> It'll be fun. We'll see. I'll t- ask me at the end. Ask All right. Ask me at the end. All right, guys. Uh, because this is the Christmas episode, we are actually doing Christmas songs. And on episode 15, Kelly said we would be doing uh, that Mariah Carey jam that we are all very familiar with, All I Want for Christmas is You. However, she is now called a, an audible, if you will. Kelly, tell the people what we're what we're talking about this week. Yeah, because you called me extra white. Because oh, that's that. the most basic of white girl <laughs> songs. So we're gonna do Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which is pretty basic Christmas song too. Yeah, why did you call the audible here and go with Santa Claus is Coming to Town? <laughs> well, once I started, I like that Mariah Carey song, but once I started reading it, I was like, uh, this is probably not really the song. I didn't feel like there was a lot of content so i was like i'm picking a new song so all right guys there are no less than 138 versions of santa claus is coming (laughs) to town Uh, my favorite is from the jackson five but uh, this song was originally written by a john frederick coots who i believe also wrote get low with little john oh my and haven gillespie and first uh, performed in november of 1934 Wow. Such notable people as Justin Bieber and Michael Bublé have done this song, which is completely not helping Kelly's theory of not being extra super basic and white here. Yes, whatever. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no, but I think it's a cl- it's a good Christmas song. Like when I was growing up, my mom used to sing this song all the time. Did your mom sing Christmas songs with you? That's a hard no, ma'am. That never. Did not- Remember, I was my mom was sixteen when I was born. So that's so my mom was sixteen when she became a mom. Did your mom have Bon Jovi posters? I don't know because I was a third child, so I got her in her twenties. See, that's <laughs> not even a fair comparison, Kelly. I was the oldest. <laughs> oh, I know. I have a brother. Complains about that. No, but my mom used to. She loved Christmas, and she would sing the songs and teach us like hand, they like you know hand like songs with snaps and stuff. <laughs> So you're like the wretched Char Five? <laughs> yeah, basically that's what happened in my house there growing up. So, like my niece when she was two would sing all those songs. Like she wasn't even two; she was probably her first, the first Christmas I remember her doing that. She was going to be two in March, and she like her, she would sing all these songs for us that my mom and taught her. All right, while you're here, after we record this, we're going to watch the Jackson Five made for TV movie biopic. Have you ever seen that? It's like five episodes, isn't it? No, it was okay. two nights. Okay. Five hours of greatness is what it is. I'm going to be honest. I recorded on my DVR, but I never watched it because I got rid of my cable. My God. The Jacksons and American Dream. I know. There may terrible. be a bonus episode about that, guys, so watch the pop feed. So there, that. Yeah, and there's a lot of different lyrics on this song, but I'm picking the lyrics that were just mostly based on what I used to sing when I was growing up. All right, Kelly, tell the people... Who, what source you got for those lyrics? <laughs> no. <laughs> Justin Bieber. The Biebs. <laughs> Justin Bieber, yes. All right, awesome. It wow. wasn't even intentional. I put in Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and it came up song by Justin Bieber. But I'm going to go ahead and say this. I'm a fan of Justin Bieber. I know. Kelly is a fan <laughs> of the Biebs. I can, Well, I don't know that I'd say I'm a fan, but I can respect his talent. Baby, 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 no. Yeah. All right, well, I will let you lead off with the lyrics okay. here. So, 
course, this is kind of creepy. No, I'm just kidding. It comes up. He starts with Santa's coming, girl. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa's coming hard. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Okay, so this is the, you know, start of Christmas lyrics. So yeah. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. So I think every parent does this. Um, I would use, like, Santa starting in, like, September for Zoe of, like, <laughs> the things. You better be good, you know, because he's watching you. But um, I always laugh when I read this because when she was, like, four, she lost her tooth and she was, like, I was like, oh, the tooth fairy is going to come. And she's like, that's creepy. Like, I don't want someone coming in my room when I'm sleeping. <laughs> and then when she was five, she she really didn't believe in... I mean, she was like, this is totally creepy. This guy watches me. He comes in our house when we're asleep. Like, I find that to be super uncomfortable. So I was like, wow. So I still told her that, but she actually found Santa to be super creepy and still does. So as we record <laughs> this, your daughter's about to turn it 11. Is that 12. right? 12. All right. She doesn't, yeah. Does she still believe that the uh, that the tooth fairy invader is coming into the home to give dollars for no. wayward teeth? Well, that's good. No, she hasn't believed that for a long time. But I told her a long time ago, if you want presents, you better believe in Santa. My God. <laughs> All right. You better watch out. You better not cry. Like, that sounds like a child that's uh, on the verge of an ass whipping to me. That's true. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Like, I'm going to do something really fucked up right here. But don't you cry about it. <laughs> if you're not getting any Christmas presents whatsoever. I'm going to beat you with a belt, but do not cry. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, this almost sounds like like touchy uncle-esque. Like, I hate to make a light of that kind of thing. Oh, I know. But immediately, I mean, part of that is a song with a friend's gimmick. It's what we do here is we, uh, we explore the seedy underbelly of popular songs. But yeah, right Mostly away. Mostly Steve does that. That's confirmed. I will not deny these charges. Santa Claus is coming to town, so you shut your fucking mouth, you kid. Better. And I think, but I think most parents use that, right? They're like, perhaps Santa's coming. You better be good. You better behave. I mean, my niece is four, and I, I heard my sister in law said that to her like a couple weeks ago. Like, you better be good. Santa's coming, and she was like, okay, like you know. Oh shit! Better get my shit together. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So like, uh, like the elf on the shelf thing like how does that oh. change that culture you know you got this little i've been meaning to say something about this on twitter this little I, elf fella is constantly watching you anyway and taking notes isn't that part of what they do yeah it's creepy um also another thing <laughs> i could never buy in my house because my daughter was like that's creepy and a lot of her friends believe it or not her parents still do that for them i think at their age it's a little bit mm. but um Parents are very extra about it. Like, I've seen yeah. people on Facebook this year that I know very well that have come up with, like, the half their living room is, like, made into a war zone, so they have this thing. And um, I think for little kids, it's probably kind of fun, but I think for my daughter's age, that's, like, we're done with that, so. Yeah. Uh, part of, like, when my daughter did it, she was super into it the first year, and then over the course of that year... She found the elf in the shelf just like under the sink next to the pine stall or whatnot. <laughs> and she had some questions. That was part of the... Uh, oh, like you mean after Christmas she found it? Yeah, like it? September she found oh. it. Oh. So we were stashing it away. Yeah. We are going to redo it the next year. But yeah, she had questions that led to the dissolution of the Santa Claus belief system yeah. in our house. Yeah. I don't know. Some I've heard some parents be like, they don't want to lie to their kids, so as soon as they ask them, they tell them the truth. I didn't really ever do that with my daughter, but she knew. Like, I mean, when she was one, I took her to see Santa. She cried the whole time. Like, she just never liked the idea of it. So, I've never confirmed still at this age that he's not real, but I, she knows. But I still put Santa under the tree. So, if you're listening, it's all lies. It's all lies. <laughs> she knows. She knows. So then he has, um, they, they say he's making a list, he's checking it twice, he's going to find out who's naughty or nice, Santa Claus is coming to town. And I'm going to say this full-heartedly, I believed in Santa till I was probably like maybe 11. And I had older brothers, never ruined it for me. And I freaking really believed in that naughty list in the back. I mean, I was like, I wanted to get presents. It was the only time of year I really got stuff. Um... Because we didn't grow up with money. So it was like Christmas was a big deal. Even if we just got socks. Like my mom would wrap like sock pairs individual. But oh, yeah. I believed in that list. Legit. Uh, this is something. Uh, when I was like eight years old I think. 
you know, I was suddenly too old and too cool for that shit. I mean, you don't believe in Santa Claus. And <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to say this on the air. At that Christmas Eve night, I'm probably about eight years old, and I'm in bed. And I just, like, felt the need to let it go out loud. So, I do believe in you, Santa Claus. <laughs> so, I wanted to make sure I got presents. Did you get presents? I did. Yeah. I think that was yeah. the year I got that sweet Bart Simpson skateboard. Holy shit. Your memory's good. But, and also, I <laughs> I woke up way early, and for some reason, my stoner parents didn't have clocks in the living room. So, I had no idea of telling what time it was. So I was just awake by myself at eight years old, and I watched Mask, the Rocky Dennis story, oh, with Cher. I love that movie. <laughs> That's what I did Christmas morning of 1990 while I waited for my family to wake up and open presents. I'm going to say, like, my parents were so cool. Like, sometimes my brothers and I would wake up at five, and they would roll out of bed, and my dad would start making breakfast, and they would totally let us do our presents. They never were like, it's too early. And I, Zoe has slept till 11 on Christmas morning <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 6 a.m. was our cutoff. I, my mom would have coffee in the coffee maker. Yeah. So you are you turn it on at 6 if you're going to wake me up then. Yeah, then I can get up. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I think when Zoe was like 6, we were waiting for her to wake up for like 4 hours. And I was like, this is ridiculous. But that's because she didn't doesn't wait all year to get stuff like most kids. <laughs> now, I told that same story to my girlfriend when I was in high school. And every now and then, but she'd be pissed at me about something else. She would mock me with that. <laughs> So, yeah, well, I do believe in you, Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> That's, amazing. That's uh, amazing. You know, psychological warfare at its finest, kids. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Parenting, you know, you got to make choices. I do like this idea, though. He's making a list of checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty and nice. Uh, you know, that, that go- ties in with the Santa Claus lore. I don't, yes. have, I don't have anything smarty to say about that. That's consistent with the Santa gimmick. Yeah. Well, and you really should be good all the time, but I just think um, when it gets closer to Christmas, parents can just, you know. Yeah, I don't want to fuck up my Sega Genesis, man. Like, yeah. I, I want... Sega Genesis? You got a Sega Genesis? In 1993? Yes, I did. Well, hell. My parents bought us a Nintendo. I can't remember what year, but there were four of us, one controller... You know what I mean? Like, we never got to play. All right, hold up. Like, the Nintendo came with two controllers. What kind of backwards it, no, ass it pad? No, it did it. It Mine came with two... Well, I'll take that back. I, I, I found so. out much later, the guys that did the Game Struck 4 series can straighten us out on this. I had the NES action set, which came with the dual cartridge of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. But it came with two controllers. No. And the gun. You're... No. And I had the silver gun as opposed to the pussy ass orange gun you know what it probably did come with two controllers one of my brothers is such a dick he probably hid it from us if it did i <laughs> never had two controllers now i had the action set there's also what i believe was called the basic set which may have only had one controller that's probably what we got because my parents would buy us like um we'd get presents and then we'd get like a family present to share see now when we got the nintendo back in like 88 it was for everybody yes and it just ended up in my room because I was the only boy. Oh, of course. But years later, when we got the Sega Genesis, it was addressed only to me. And I had to fight that for a full, like, two years because my sisters would want to play it. I'm like, no, it was just to me. <laughs> You're such a dick. I'm a greedy little fuck. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, shit, sorry. That's ridiculous. <laughs> did you keep the tag? N- no, oh, I did I not. Gosh, I did not have that evidence to... Mm. Oh my gosh, you're going to look that up. Okay, so then this is the part. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Which sounds so easy. But that is the part that my daughter was not on board with. (laughs) She's like, I don't like people watching me while I'm sleeping. It is actually sort of creepy. But I don't, I mean, I think everybody probably heard this song at some point when they were growing up. It's so that when you're a kid, most kids don't think twice of it. Uh, your daughter was more observant than most. Yeah, she, yeah. I didn't realize how problematic that was until I was fully grown. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, you got anything to add there? Uh, no. Okay. Huh? Yeah. I'm with and you then we that. got, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why, because Santa Claus is coming to town, which I already read. Um, that's pretty much it on that song. There's not much more to add, so... All right, um, I, I have the wiki up. 
Okay. For the uh, everybody donate money to Wiki for the NES. That's right. It's that time of year where every time you go onto Wikipedia, I they, I mean I begging. use it every day. I use it every single day. All right. There's. I'm not seeing any bundle that comes with less. The basic set released in 1987. Yeah. Included only the console and two controllers. So even the most basic set had two I'm controllers. I'm telling you, we had one controller. And was no longer bundled with the cartridge. I'm gonna call my brother right now. Please, no, I'm just kidding. Put him on speaker and put him on the air. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no telling what state of mind. We can't call him on the. Hey, fella, why'd you, why'd you have the controller I'm back in '87? I'm telling you, we had one controller. That's very interesting. Now that you say that, because I bet he hit it. Now I have to take that. Now I have a whole other issue I have to deal with. <laughs> All right, guys, that wraps us up for Santa Claus is coming to town. Uh, we have a, a missing NES controller. We're, we're going to be very upset about that right now. <laughs> on the case now. Uh, did you have it? Did it come with any games? Do you know? I know we had Super Mario Brothers. All right. But, uh, I remember, like down the line, we had Zelda. We had Tetris, which was my game. That's what I played. And then we had Zelda. Did you ever play Zelda? Yeah, I did. I actually have Zelda for the Switch, and I've yet to really delve into it. You're so spoiled. I, I am. Yeah, no, I played Zelda, and I liked obviously the Mario Brothers, but I love Tetris. I still would play. I'll play the fuck out of Tetris. You know, when I bought an, a Game Boy Advance back in the year of our Lord 2003, the first thing I did was bought a Tetris cartridge used from the original Game Boy. So that cartridge had to be every bit of 15 years old. Man. And I would play the shit out of that I'm every day. I'm going to go on eBay. I want an old school Game Boy with Tetris. Yep. I bet I could buy one. It is the Christmas season, Kelly. Maybe you'll wake up in your stocking and you'll have a I haven't f- been good this year. <laughs> fat-ass brick-sized Game Boy. Maybe. Maybe. All right, guys. Now we're going to move on to the second song of our show this week. Excuse me. And uh, this one was written in 1944 by a gentleman named Frank Lesser. It has been covered approximately 314 times since then, (laughs) by my rough count. Uh, This is Baby It's Cold Outside. Now, I picked this song the last time we recorded because it's clearly just iffy at best. And shortly after I actually verbalized this pick, it was all over the news. I did not pick this song because it was a news story. The news story came after me. If anything, I'm an influencer here. <laughs> yes. On the national news. It is important that you know that. And radio you know that. stations that are pulling this song from the airwaves now, apparently. Yes. Due to outcry. <laughs> Hashtag me too for Baby It's Cold Outside is is drawing some heat. I know. Just <laughs> fucking Which hilarious. Which is like really weird I, because you know me. I'm very feminist, but I do think sometimes things are super ultra sensitive, and I just, this is crazy. Yeah, anyway. this is one of those deals where I went overboard. Yeah, so, um, but, you know, we're going to play into it because that's what we do. That's what we steer <laughs> into the accident, kids. That's what we do here. All right, guys. Uh, like I said there's a bunch of recordings of this. Uh, I listened to several of them myself, including the version from Elf with Will Ferrell. Uh, the Frank Sinatra version, which was by far the most problematic. You could tell Frank Sinatra has talked a few women into staying in from alleged snowstorms in his day. <laughs> now we're slandering Frank. Well, you know what? Uh, your hey, I'll right. go on record. Fuck Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> and that is coming from someone who absolutely adores my way as a song and as a piece of art. Frank Sinatra as a person that Fucking dirtball worst human being. Any member of his family can come at me legally. And I'm just going to quickly tack and allegedly onto everything I'm saying here. (laughs) Wow, I did not know we had this kind of hatred. Fuck Frank. (laughs) Old blue eyes, old blue balls, fuck you. Alright guys, uh, let's get into it here. Uh, This is a call and response type song. Typically a duet with a man and a woman, but hey, it's 2018, Tim Capel. If you want to sing this with a dude and a dude, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Uh, and uh, what I learned in looking up this lyrics earlier was apparently the characters are kind of codenamed. The man is wolf and the woman is mouse. Which adds a whole new layer of fuckery to the yeah, song. Yeah, what's happening? So we start with, I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I gotta go away. Baby, it's cold outside. 
So the first lines of this are the the woman trying to get out of the house mm -hmm. from uh sounds like probably a party type situation. And the dude, Frank Sinatra here, in my most listened to version. So no, nah, baby, it's cold outside. Don't you go out there. It's stay in here. Let me keep you warm. Mm-hmm. Do uh, you have anything to add to this so far, Kel? No, I think that's kind of, you know, I think that's common, actually. When people, do, I don't know about the cold outside, but, you know, when someone doesn't want to, doesn't want you to leave, they'll find a reason to try to, you know, get you to stay. This evening has been, and he doesn't even let her finish here. <laughs> been hoping that you dropped in. So she finishes so very nice. I'll hold your hands. They're just like ice. Like, what does that have to do with it? She's not even outside yet. And he's already using the cold card here. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So then she, she starts, like, listing alibis. My mother will start to worry. Like, I gave them your address before I left. <laughs> if you're going to rape and or kill me. Oh, my God. So then he counters with, beautiful, what's your hurry? Oh, my gosh. Hey, anything you want to contribute to that, Kelly? Wow. I should have read these more because now I'm like super creeped out. I just watched a video about this this morning. Um, well, yeah. And if somebody's really giving you that many excuses, you just got to gotta be like, okay, this girl's not into it. I got to, you know, I'm going to let her go. <laughs> like, no means no, boys. Yeah. Don't come out with 15 counterattacks. And when you bring up your, my father will be pacing the floor. Dear, geez. Like, it's yeah. like, my father will be pacing the floor. <laughs> Mine would have been my dad's going to get his shotgun. But. So his counter to that is listen to the fireplace roar. Like, that's almost like a veiled threat. Yes. Like, I have an open flame right over here, bitch. If you don't cooperate, your ass is going in with the Yule log. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so she says, so really, I'd better scurry. And he counters with baby, or beautiful, please don't hurry. But then she, she starts to succumb a little bit. Well, maybe just a half a drink more. Oh. Not even a whole ass drink. No, just a half. Maybe I'll finish this scotch here that you poured for me. Maybe yeah. Because it's 1944. So then he says, I'll put some records on while I'll pour. Oh. Like he's planning, he, he puts on a whole other 45. Yeah. But <laughs> this is a problem to me because I feel like, I don't feel like so much now, but back then or whenever the song was written, it was like, I don't know. I feel like it, you women were put in a different place, you know, and they still are in a lot of ways. So it would be like, uh, they kind of say a lot to women. Like if you're in, if you're in a situation, you feel uncomfortable, follow that instinct and roll with it. But sometimes women will be like, I would, I didn't want to be rude. And so then they end up there in a situation where they're being like, I mean, not to be extreme, but you know, raped or yeah. because they actually just, they felt uncomfortable, but they didn't want to be offensive or they didn't want to hurt the guy's feelings. And then it's like, Oh my gosh. And that's kind of, like, actually what that seems like to be, that, like, she's setting up to be in a situation that could be, like, I don't know, like, she could be assaulted. I mean, it's probably an extreme way to say it, but, it's not, you know, yeah. that taken advantage of or just because she doesn't want to be, she wants to, she's being nice. I would tell you straight up, she's already trying to get out of the house. She is scrambling for excuses, trying to hit the road. So he says, all right, well, I'll put on some music and I'll pour you another drink. <laughs> I will impair you further. To show that you cannot get out of the house any quicker because the alcohol is still going to be coursing through your system. You're going to take more time to sober up. Like, this is predatory behavior here. This is half a drink. Half a drink. A half a drink is still over the limit, ma'am. <laughs> Fucking click it or tick it. That was actually me earlier. I should have said half a drink on the second drink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, kids. We're a tad buzzed recording the Christmas episode here. This is the Songs of Friends office holiday party. <laughs> But we didn't do Hennessy still. I'm not badass enough for that, so we did a... Uh... All right, guys. We we make decent money. I'll level with you. We're not drinking fucking Hennessy on the air for your entertainment. <laughs> not that I don't love the good folks at the Place to Be Nation, but I'm not getting sick for the love of the podcast game. My dad's wife actually was like, Kelly, um, are you really going to drink that? <laughs> she was concerned. I was like, eh, I don't know. So, Maybe I won't even drink, but here I am. No, so. when we went to the liquor store, I didn't even it didn't even cross my mind to look for Hennessy. Yes, we went with Tito's. Tito's vodka, Austin, Texas's finest. Yes, yes. All right. So the neighbors might think, "Oh, baby, it's bad out there." He says. So he's like, "Hey, you know, don't worry about the neighbors. It's a flurry yeah, out there." Yeah, who cares? He said, "Say what's in this drink?" Oh my gosh! 
All right, I looked into this. Apparently, this was a common thing back then, like a a saying more than a colloquialism, if you will. Okay, okay. It's like, oh, you know, what's in this drink? Because I'm getting pretty drunk. As yeah. opposed to, what's in this drink? A fucking roofie. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because you go, sometimes you, I don't encounter this very often, but I've been to people's homes where they are making drinks and they mm-hmm. just start handing them out. So you don't yeah. really know what's in it. You know, like they're not even asking you what you want. They're just like, you know, or someone's over there making some kind of fruity, whatever mm-hmm. drink, and they're handing them out. So. Yo, that was me throughout the first half of my 20s. I yeah. had many delicious drinks. I did not know what they were. They got the job done. But when I stopped seeing those people, I had no idea how to make yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Say, so what's in this drink? No cabs to be had out there. So he's Ooh. telling you, all right, you're buzzed. You can't drive. And now there's nobody that will come and get oh you. Oh, my gosh. Call your dad. <laughs> he's pacing the floor. And in 1944, I don't know how advanced the phone system was back then. Maybe you had to call it a dispatcher. Oh, yeah. Connect you through. I don't know. Like Mad Men when they would use the phone. Yeah. Like Mad Men. That's perfect. <laughs> she says, I wish I knew how. And then he starts trying to put the charm on her. Your eyes are like starlight now. Whoa. So she's trying to backpedal. He's like, no, I, I want to fuck you is what's going on here. <laughs> so finish your drink. Finish your drink, woman. Ain't no half step in here, baby. You're going to drink this drink and you're going to take this thing. Is there other thing. people here still, you think? I don't think so, because she's trying to plan an exit strategy. Yeah. If there are other people at the party, I think she would be able to Hop say, a ride. Hey, I'm leaving with Bruce, you damn dirty pervert. <laughs> Get off me. <sighs> All right. I wish I knew how your eyes are like starlight now. To break this spell. He says, I'll take your hat. Your hair looks swell. Wow. So she's already getting dressed to go out the door. Yes. She put her hat on. I assume the coat's coming next, so he takes the hat right off her head. Yes. This is how your hair looks good, though, baby. Yeah. But then she turns, oh, well, thank you. I think it's more of just the gender roles back then. Yes. Where the women were seen as, uh, in the society, more uh, subservient. Yeah, yeah. So, well, and I think a lot of women try to, I mean, you know, oh, thank you. Like, you don't want to be mm. rude when someone gives you a compliment. But I do think times are different a little bit. People will be like, I mean, hopefully someone could, well, I don't know, modern day, I could kind of see this still happening. All right. She doesn't know how to break this spell. I'll take your hair, your hair looks well, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. I ought to say no, 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 sir. Oh. So she's saying I ought to say no, but he says, well, mind if I move in closer? Wow. So she's acknowledging that it's probably not in her best interest to say yes. But he's invading her personal space now. So then she, it's like she's pretty much relinquishing control at this point. Aww. She says, at least I'm going to say that I tried. Oh. So I, 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 I was going to say no, but he kept moving in on me. So I better say yes, because this is getting pretty weird. Oh my gosh, these lyrics are actually pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we've been listening to this for 70 I, years. I will. Well, okay. So I'm going to say this, and you brought it up already, the elf. When I saw, I love elf. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies. And uh, that scene where she's in the shower, like I actually never really thought this song was that creepy, but in that movie when she's singing in the shower and then he's in there singing with her, first time I saw that I was like, that's creepy as fuck. Like you're in the <laughs> shower, you're singing, and you start hearing some dude singing, you know? And I was like... I don't know, but I still don't know that I paid attention to the lyrics, but that scene was very creepy in that movie. I will confirm that. Will Ferrell in his tights singing to Zoe, blah, blah, blah. I can't think of her life. Deschanel? Deschanel. Is that how you say that? I don't know. I think it's... I've only read it. I've never heard it said out loud. Yeah, I don't know how you say it, actually, either. All right, one of you pop culture fiends on The Place to Be Nation will correct us on that. I know, and she's very pretty, so... She is. That is confirmed. Let's see... And she says, at least I'm going to say that I tried. And he responds with, responds with, what's the sense of hurt in my pride? Oh, my. Fucking dick move there. Yeah. It's like, what's the fellas going to think of me if I don't close this deal with this drunk chick mm-hmm. at my holiday party in the middle of a damn blizzard? Uh, yeah. It's disgusting. I can't co-sign that at all. So then she says, I really can't stay. He says, baby, don't hold out. Oh, my gosh. This is kind of like high school. It is. And these are grown ups, but like I think I'm. I really shouldn't say this. It's probably kind of mean to say, but I think guys in high school are more. I shouldn't even say that. 
a little more pushy and I'm yeah. going to say no for an answer. And I think it's, I'm not justifying it all, but like, a hor- you know, I don't know. Maybe they just, I mean, I just feel like sometimes and then the alcohol gets to flow in and then people are like, shit, I didn't mean to do that. Um, you know, I maybe wouldn't have slept with that person had I been sober kind of thing. So men don't be afraid to take your L's gracefully. Yes. There's a lot to be said for that. Yes. And just cause it doesn't work out for you that night doesn't mean it won't work out oh, for you another especially night. Especially when you're in, yeah. There's another chick out there that wants you. Right. Actually. Yeah. Don't be weird, dude. <laughs> don't be weird. So then she says, oh, you're very pushy, you know. And he says, I like to think of it as opportunistic. <laughs> it's, it's, that is super creepy. And like I said, in listening to Frank Sinatra do this, like he's lived this life before. Yeah. He's like, you know what? You came here to fuck Dean Martin? Yeah. He's out there drinking apple juice, pretending it's it's liquor on stage. Nah, baby, you're gonna you're gonna ride with the boss tonight. You're gonna, yeah. My God. Wow. So she says, "I simply must go." He says, "Baby, it's cold outside." And then here's where she drives it home. The answer is no. And he says, "But there's no but after <laughs> yeah. that, fam." Yeah. Like, not at all. Like you're done. Yeah. He says, "But baby, it's cold outside." Any thoughts on that, Kelly? No, that's horrible. But I think that's it. Like, I don't know. I feel like people make fun of that consent thing a lot or the Me Too, Me Too movement thing, and I don't get it because it's like, once someone tells you no, let it go. Like, I I, I don't know why people don't. I don't know why you'd want to force someone to want to be intimate with you anyways. So. Now, I think part of this thing has gotten comically overblown. However, uh, you know, this thing wouldn't exist. This movement wouldn't exist without reason. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's enough scumbag dudes out there to where this Me Too thing had to become a thing. And yeah. women had to feel that they weren't going to be afraid to speak up anymore. Oh, could you imagine how it was back then? Because at oh, least yeah, now, no. like, I don't know even, I remember like, I bet when, I don't know, when I was like in high school one time, I was like, Man, the world's so terrible. And my dad was like, it's always been terrible, Kelly. Nobody just didn't have... I mean, there wasn't the internet and TV. I mean, it wasn't out there. But if you think back in the 40s and 50s, people weren't doing bad stuff to kids and raping women. They were. It just wasn't so in your face. And I'm like, oh, that's horrible. But I mean, it's kind of true. Like, almost probably might have could have been worse because there was no backlash for yeah. doing that kind of thing. Uh, you know? I, I won't get into this heavy on the show. But uh, there was a case I read about. I I work in the prison system, for those of you who may not be aware. Uh, I became aware of the case of a gentleman, I don't say gentleman, a fucking scumbag, named Dean Corll, C-O-R-L-L. I like to study that case on your own time, guys. Uh, But apparently, like, missing teenage boys kept coming up, straight up gone in this pretty tight area. I can't remember what the town was now. But nobody was looking into it. Because everyone just assumed they were runaways back then. Oh, God. It turns out this guy was, like, torturing them and raping them and killing them. And, yeah, people just weren't... It's like people didn't want to look at unpleasant outcomes. Yes, yes. Like, you know what? It was Pleasantville. We're just going to keep looking straight ahead. And yes. everything is love. As mm-hmm. long as my dinner's ready at fucking 5 o'clock and my, exactly. my shirt is ironed, everything's cool. Yeah. But, yeah, a lot of people got hurt with that mindset. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad that people are more open to looking into the, the plights of others. Exactly. All right. Where were we here? The answer is no. The welcome has been, how lucky that you dropped in. So nice and warm. But then he's still saying, look at the window. Look at that storm. <laughs> Don't leave. He says, my sister will be, sus-, or she says, my sister will be suspicious. His counter. Oh. <laughs> gosh, your lips look delicious. Wow. Delicious. Shout out to Jennifer Smith in the group chat. He looked at her and said, "Use a tasty bitch." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But then she comes with my brother will be there at the door, and the waves upon a tropical shore. So my maiden aunt's might is vicious. Then he says, "Gosh, your lips are delicious." Oh, so they've kissed now. He's moved in. He's moved in. He has gone for the kill. Oh, here she goes. So then she says, all right, well, maybe just a cigarette more. <laughs> Never such a blizzard before. And then she says, and I don't even smoke. Oh, my. 
He's wearing her down. She's so nervous. She's going for the Marlboro Reds. Oh, my. She says, I've got to get home. He says, baby, you'll freeze out there. Say, lend me a coat. He said, it's up to your knees out there. (laughs) You've really been grand. So he says, I feel when I touch your hand. She says, but don't you see? He says, how can you do this thing to me? Oh, my God. He's such a victim now. Exactly. He's turning himself into the victim. Well, he's been a full court press asshole here. Because I I let you in my home and I gave you alcohol and food and entertained you for the night, so you must fuck me. Yeah, that's not the rules, boys. That's not the rules at all. No. These people don't owe you anything. Damn it. All right, let's see. Don't you see? Oh, uh, there's bound to be talk tomorrow. Oh. He says, think of my lifelong sorrow. Oh my. He's so worried about his reputation taking I know. a hit because he couldn't close the deal here. Yeah. At least there will be plenty implied. Or she says, at least you'll be, there'll be plenty implied. She's worried about her rep now because she's oh been there too Oh my gosh, late. look at this. She says, if you caught pneumonia and died. <laughs> so look, if you don't fuck me, you're going to go out there and catch the black plague. You're basically going to die if we don't have sex tonight. Oh my gosh. She says, I really can't stay. Get over that old out. And then they old out. They end with, baby, it's cold. Baby, it's cold outside. And she she just fucking gives up. Okay, fine. Just another drink then. Oh my god. He says that took a lot of convincing. That is crazy. <laughs> and it, it's a wrap. That's a wrap. This song, you know, I don't believe in just erasing it from the airwaves. But no. It, but it really is just teaching a bad story here. Yeah. It is, boys, if you keep pressing on her, eventually she'll give up. Yeah. And that's the true spirit of Christmas. Yeah, that's actually, why is this a Christmas song? Because it's cold outside, Kelly. That is a horrible Christmas song. It's a Christmas song because it is in the middle of a non-consensual blizzard of snow and horniness. Well, and they really are not, I was watching a video this morning, they are really not playing it on some, I mean, they're not playing it. Yeah, the, uh. Some of the radio stations banned it and then rescinded the band. But yeah, it's uh, it's not a good climate for Baby It's Cold Outside. I don't believe in just erasing everything you don't agree no, with. No, no. But yeah, this is, it's not great either. Yeah. I think just acknowledge that it's a shit show <laughs> and move on. Yeah. Part of that is me living in Kentucky and just thinking that uh, my old Kentucky home is like the most problematic possibly state anthem. Uh, it's fucking horrible if you listen to it. I have not heard that. Yeah. Because no. I've never even been to Kentucky till yesterday. <laughs> this will be an off-the-air presentation. I'll have to break in on that. Okay. <laughs> um, ooh, it's it's not good. Every year they're played at the Kentucky Derby. And that's on national television. I'm like, oh, shit, they're saying that part. No, don't do that. And no one just... Everyone just goes with it. Yeah. It's yeah. very... Uh, it's very Get Out, that movie. Yeah. Oh, the the vibe of this. Oh, no. Yeah, it's okay. not good. That's not good. All right, guys. That about wraps us up for episode 16, the Christmas Office Party. <laughs> Christmas Office Party. Excuse me. Spectacular. Uh, you had a fancy name for that. I did. Mm-hmm. So now we will pick our songs for next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kelly went first this week, so I will be picking first for next time. I'm going with... Uh, Eminem and Nate Dog from 2002. This is Till I Collapse. Oh. And Kelly, what is your pick for next that time? That is awesome. I am going to do Hootie and the Blowfish. Fuck Let me. her cry. Let her cry. <laughs> because I am super excited they are doing a tour, and I'm like, uh, I'm going. I don't care. I think they're going in Austin. I think that's where I'm going to have to go. Are you going to be super excited if they do the Darius Rucker Whack and Will variant? I, I can deal with that song, yes. He has a couple of his country songs that I like. I'm going to play them for you here in a little bit. You, you can play them if you like. <laughs> this may turn into a baby is cold outside here where I'm <laughs> scrambling for a reason to get out of the room. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so... Steve didn't seem very thrilled about the Hootie and the Blowfish reunion tour, but I'm excited. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a tour. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. I don't mind Hootie and the Blowfish. They're just, they don't elicit much response out of me one way or the other. Okay. You know, they're better than Dave Matthews. I'll give them that. Oh, my. I said We're going to have to take that. To All right. We're not going to have a fight at the end of the show, are we? Kelly, anything you want to plug? 
Uh, you could just follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Kelgeen17. All right, guys, I recently changed my Twitter handle for no reason in particular other than branding for the show. Uh, you can follow me at Songs with Steve. Uh, I would have killed the not Dr. Death. Uh, also follow the show proper at PTBN underscore songs. Uh, you can send us an email at PTBN songs of friends at gmail.com. I'm going to level with you guys. I've been plugging that for like seven months now. <laughs> We've got one email. Was it spam? It was a creepy dude looking for pictures of you. Stop it. I think he was Indian. <laughs> You're ridiculous. It's a real story. You're ridiculous. That and when I went to All In, Kevin sent me the itinerary to these songs of friends. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Email address. We need to pick a Kevin. I just told Steve this today. We're gonna pick a. Ke- I'm gonna pick a Kevin type song soon. Yeah, follow him. Fuck Defrango something something numbers. <laughs> <laughs> he works out and he listens to good music. <laughs> God bless him. He's a good brother. And uh, drinks beer. And drinks beer. <laughs> All right, guys. For Kelly, this is Steve. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Place Me Nation's Justin Rosero and Chad Campbell here. We want to let you know that we have a ton of great podcasts available to you on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and PlaceMeNation.com. And we now offer them to you on two great feeds. On the Place Nation wrestling feed, we bring you the mothership, the place to be podcast, main event, survey says, wrestling war zone, a Monday Night Wars podcast retrospective, no holds barred, Jeff learns wrestling in our monthly pay-per-view reaction shows. On top of that, we're also dipping into the vault, re-releasing the entire catalog of where the big boys play for your enjoyment. And in addition to these full-length shows, we also deliver special network pod blasts on topics old and new. The Place to Be Nation pop feed is loaded with great content, offering such tremendous shows covering the land of pop culture, such as Geek and Sassy, Talk and Pop, the Glenn Butler Podcast Hour Spectacular, Sunday Groove, PTBN Play, Freak Out Drive-In, Songs with Friends, Looking Forward, Looking Back, and Lucha Undead, as well as a veritable podcast heaven for comics fans with the hard-traveling fanboys, Sellers Points, Conversation Comics, DC Pros Crisis Management, Marvel Age, and Marvel Age Masterclass, plus weekly pod blasts that cover the gamut of comic topics. The feed is also filled with insightful sports content, including the NBA team, This Week in the NFL, and more. And you can find all these current shows plus archives of our past podcasts, including The Kevin Kelly Show, as well by subscribing to both feeds on iTunes. And while there, be sure to rate and leave feedback as well. All these shows plus others available at PlaceMation.com. We cover pro wrestling, sports, movies, comics, in-depth stretch projects, and more. Be sure to support our site by using PlaceMation.com forward slash Amazon while doing your online shopping. And download our free PTB Vintage Vault Refresh eBooks via the links on our site. We also want to thank our friends at Bonehead's Wing Bar, ProWrestlingOnly.com, and TheHistoryOfWrestling.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr as well. PlaceMation.com, the only place to be in your pop culture world.